Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. We have a picture of the pursuit. Sandy, enjoy this subject. It's going to kill somebody. We got them. We got them. They're down in the ditch. Look around. He's wrecked. He's wrecked. No matter where you are, at any second, it could happen to you. Because desperate criminals use desperate measures. No matter who gets in the way. For the next 60 minutes, you'll get a close-up view of what officers see every day. You'll ride shotgun in the most terrifying chases on the road. You'll feel the heat of the most explosive acts of criminal insanity ever captured on tape. Much of this footage has never been viewed by the public. Police and news agencies send us their most shocking videos. He's got a gun, he's got a gun! So that you can know what they know. That to let your guard down, even for an instant, Get in and could mean disaster. He's gonna run the red light, he's gonna run it! So crank up your TV and don't turn away because real life happens in the blink of an eye. Shut your truck off! I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. When police receive a call, it requires immediate action. And nothing responds faster than a helicopter. Scrambling a chopper is just as important to law enforcement as it is to the military, because lives do hang in the balance. So hang on. You're about to see the insanity of the chase as police respond to the call. Los Angeles, California. Just moments ago, the hoodlums in this van pulled a drive-by shooting on a rival gang. It didn't take long for officers to catch up. These suspects known to be armed. They could open fire at any time. The law of the street says these gang members are supposed to form an unbreakable brotherhood. But with police on their tail, it's a different story. It's reported that someone inside the van threw weapons into the street and one person got out and ran away. The driver, who was so bold before officers arrived, now wants out. So does his friend. Oh, someone else slid into the driver's seat. He pulls out and the suspect goes flying from the side door. The new wheelman just wants to save his own neck, even if it means endangering his comrades. And the driver just took off and left him behind. There's no gang unity now. In fact, there's hardly a gang. And now another has just jumped out of the van He's got his arms in the air. Knowing they're still in rival territory, the remaining members of the crew take off. We know that there are at least two in the van, the driver and one person in the back. The van side doors swing wide, exposing the gang to police. One of the thugs risks tumbling out onto the street to close it. Then they speed up, blindly shooting through intersections. Cutting back onto side streets, the driver uses the van to bully other vehicles out of the way. The suspect taking more chances now. They lead officers through narrow alleys. Police follow with extreme caution. After all, the gangsters have used their weapons before, only minutes ago. Returning to main streets, the suspects encounter traffic, but nothing's going to stop them now. Approaching a completely blocked intersection. Oh, he's going straight up onto the sidewalk right there. He's not stopping for anything. Night falls and the officers continue to hold back. They still don't know how many gang members are in the van or how heavily they're armed. You can see drivers have their lights on now. What police do know is what the suspects have already proven. They won't hesitate to kill. Another intersection totally blocked. Oh, he jumped the median. Drove right over the concrete divider in the center of the highway. Now he's going back the other way. Still, the officers know they have to take action before these renegades can get back to their own turf and ditch the van. But because of the number of pedestrians around, police can't be too aggressive. There's children on the sidewalk in this neighborhood. So they get ahead of the suspects and deploy stop sticks. Officers lay down some spikes ahead. Other units follow and wait for the men to roll over their trap. The spike strip has had an effect. Fighting for control of the crippled vehicle, the driver tries to make a hard right. He comes within inches of hitting another car. Police think it's over. 
but the suspect has gone too far to stop now. He wrestles with the steering wheel, trying desperately to keep the van on the street. That tire is nothing but tatters now. But the vehicle's bare rims win the fight. The van veers left, then skids out of control and smashes into the center divider. Look at the sparks flying. Finally, the suspect's ride comes to a rest. Police are on scene, they've got their guns drawn. This time, the chase is really over. And even though these gangsters didn't give up as easily as their partners did... They've got their hands in the air. It's done, it's over. Looks like there were two of them and it's all over. They'll all end up in the same place. When the day began, these guys were a gang. These suspects known to be armed. They could open fire at any time. By late afternoon... Oh, someone else slid into the driver's seat. It was every man for himself. But no matter what gang oaths they took... The suspect taking more chances now. Or what promises they broke. By sundown, they were all prisoners of the state. Sydney, Australia. It's a common crime that happens every day, all around the world. Petty thieves often view gasoline theft as the perfect heist, one in which they can make a quick and clean getaway. But not all such criminals pull it off so easy. In Carryville, Tennessee, these crooks find that out the hard way. Throwing caution to the wind, the driver doesn't heed the warning of the speed limit posted right in his path. A pretty high price for gas. Douglasville, Georgia. Sergeant Keith Hayes races to intersect a high-speed pursuit headed in his direction. The suspect is wanted for Grand Theft Auto. The call for assistance went out so fast, the sergeant didn't have time to switch off his dash cam night vision. The suspect turns into a residential neighborhood where he meets with an unpleasant surprise. A series of speed bumps. He's forced to slow down and the officer moves in to pit the fleeing vehicle. But the car swerves and skids across a residential lawn. Somehow, the driver keeps control and pulls back onto the road. He stomps the accelerator once more. A second officer joins the chase. But at the next intersection, both cruisers become trapped in a snarl of traffic. The suspect gains precious distance. But up ahead, a sports utility vehicle blocks his escape. He pulls wide and speeds head-on toward a truck in the turning lane. Somehow, the suspect squeezes between the two vehicles with only an inch of clearance on either side. Taking another desperate chance, the man crosses into oncoming traffic again. But this time, the innocent driver can't get out of his way. As the suspect veers into the far lanes, the two cars meet in a terrifying head-on collision. As Sergeant Hayes pulls into the crash site, backup units race to take the suspect into custody. The sergeant hurries to assist the injured woman. Hey, stay put, stay put, you're okay. Fortunately, this woman will make a full recovery from her injuries. The suspect, unbelievably, had no injuries at all. But he'll pay a price for causing this brutal accident. It will cost him his freedom. Coming up on police videos. This guy's almost out of control. Desperate criminals take out all the stops. Crash that again. And armed parolee tries to fend off hard time. And the streets of a sleeping city become streets of burning rage. Get back! It's mayhem and madness unleashed. Unbelievable recklessness. Next. Sometimes during a pursuit, suspects are intent on destruction for its own sake. The question may not be, will they escape? 
but how much damage will they do before they can be stopped? Cary, Ohio. A menacing driver and his willing accomplice are using the street as a deadly playground. Not trying to get a vehicle stopped. The suspects are intentionally running other drivers off the road and racing down the highway at triple digit speeds. Officer Roger Phillips struggles to stay with the car. He makes an urgent call for backup. You need 100, you got any units in the area. But Cary is a small town. Neither Ohio State Patrol nor the county sheriff's office can respond immediately. The refusing to stop. With the suspect's fast car, they have little trouble gaining distance on the solitary officer. At this pace, they're as good as gone. Until... They just wiped out. Their speed works against them. Seen again, the officer's dash cam shows the suspects losing control on a sharp turn. A long trail of skid marks points to where the suspects have wrecked. Amazingly, the fugitives are unfazed. They defiantly drive back into the cruiser's path. Back up on the roadway. Phillips radios once more for backup. Connecticut County's got people headed that way. Troopers are finally en route, but for now, Officer Phillips must continue to go it alone. The speeding suspects leave the squad car in their dust. We're still northbound. Before long, they've virtually disappeared. Once again, they have a real chance of escape. But when the men encounter heavy cross traffic, they're forced to make a split second maneuver. Crashed out again. The move almost cost them their lives, but the outlaws could care less. They skim right by the officer and onto the street. Back on the road again. But the suspect's numerous wipeouts have disabled their vehicle, and they're not able to accelerate as quickly as before. Reduce the speed down to 65. Suddenly, they slam on the brakes, then immediately hit the gas, catapulting the car around a right turn. Crazed raiders intentionally plow into a highway marker. Then without slowing down, they fly past a stop sign. When they come out of the turn, they decelerate, daring the officer to make a move. But before Phillips can act, they lurch forward, literally burning the rubber off their tires. Once again, they deliberately head off-road, this time running down a mailbox. Then they shoot across the street and take out another sign. Taking out mailboxes, road signs, and cars. Knowing that Phillips has no backup, dispatch does what they can to help the officer. They soon identify the suspects and where they're going. The men are bound for home, but they're not going to make it. The suspect's own cockiness does them in. They try to make a sharp turn going too fast. Tires squeal as the car slides across the road. They clip a stop sign, then smash into a tree. Okay, crash out again. The car is finally dead. Stunned but lucky to be alive, the men exit the vehicle. Phillips is on them in an instant. On the ground! Get on the ground! Backup arrives to find the suspects already in custody. All that's left for Phillips to do is share his incredible story. I, I chased them 50 miles, hitting cars, 15, 20 mailboxes, signs, stop signs, everything. I've never had anything like this, never. Officer Roger Phillips found himself alone in one of the wildest, most dangerous pursuits ever. But what's even more amazing is what police learn after the chase. It just walked out. The driver is an unlicensed juvenile. The passenger, a prison escapee. Back on the road again. Both men were beyond the legal drinking limit. And the car was stolen from the suspect's own mother. Not the best way to start a driving career. I've seen suspects on the run go to great lengths to destroy evidence. An ex found with a firearm will do anything he can to get rid of that weapon. Tule County, Utah. A convicted felon with a loaded firearm flees from police. With the number of cruisers relentlessly riding his tail, there's almost no chance of escape. But he's not running simply to get away. He knows if police catch him with a weapon, it could mean the difference between several months and several years in prison. 
He's trying to get out of sight just long enough to ditch the gun. In a desperate attempt to get police to back off, the suspect brazenly charges straight towards a semi. He leads cruisers through a series of heart-pounding, head-spinning, 360-degree turns. But officers won't be fooled. They get ahead of the suspect and wait with stop sticks. The sticks tear into the suspect's wheels. It slows him down, but he drives on, completely ignoring the damage done. Officers try using a little more force. The road is clear. They make their move. One unit rams the already disabled car. But amazingly, the suspect recovers. Police move in once more. As the car spins around, officers see how badly damaged it really is. But he's got to get rid of his weapon, and he's not stopping until he does. He tears into a truck stop parking lot. Suddenly, he jumps out of his car and tries to hijack this pickup. But officers are too close. He turns to run, but stumbles. While on the ground, he tosses the gun away. He gets up, hops back into his own vehicle, and resumes the chase. But he doesn't get far before officers strike again. Hard. Thinking he's outfoxed police by losing the sidearm, he gives up without a struggle. But if he thinks he's getting off easy, he's sorely mistaken. The man will have to answer to numerous charges of aggravated assault with a vehicle and carrying a concealed weapon. Because officers found the missing pistol shortly after the arrest. Coming up on Police Videos, chaos hits home when wild drivers Whoa. and reckless renegades Foot bail. Foot bail. put their own families on the front line. From a collision to hostage situation. It's danger at your doorstep. Next. Oh, yeah. In any pursuit, we can chase the guy until he stops, force him to stop, or discontinue the pursuit. All three are risky, but at some point, you're gonna make a decision based on your experiences. Phoenix, Arizona. Police and local news choppers are tracking this pickup's every move. We've got about five helicopters here uh, watching this slow speed pursuit. With two probation violations and a felony drug warrant, the driver knows he's a wanted man. Just minutes ago, he drove past this police roadblock, narrowly avoiding a spike strip surprise and almost colliding with a passing car. But the man's not running away from police. He's heading towards something else. He looks lost. He's, well, OK, he's changing his mind, driving over the front yard there. Officers pull back, and the tactic works. The fugitive slows down, but continues on like a man with a mission. OK, he's off the freeway now. He's definitely going someplace now. Officers watch, giving him plenty of lead, even as he edges toward a busy cross street. Whoa! Just missed a truck there. And when he can't squeak through, he improvises. Now he's blowing through a parking lot. He wants to do a left, but there's heavy cross traffic. Whoa, look at this guy. On the sidewalk, what is he thinking? But police ground units stay ready to make their move. OK, just pass an officer right there. Until the final destination becomes clear to police air support. OK, he's going to bailing. Thank you for the bailing. The fugitive has one last errand before his arrest. Going into a house. He's running into the house over here. Saying goodbye to his dying mother. 11th way, it's his mom's house. Officers learn that she is stricken with terminal cancer. With his warrants, the man knows he's facing serious time. He would probably never see his mother again. Looks like he's gonna give it up. And when the bittersweet reunion is over, the man turns himself in. He's giving himself up. He's coming out uh, with his hands above his uh, neck. Officers step forward and make the arrest. The man gives no resistance. This fugitive was wanted for multiple felonies. But there was more to his flight than fear of prison. And
And even though he made matters worse by running, the officers trusted their instincts, stayed back, and let the suspect's dilemma run its course. Looks like he's gonna give it up. It proved to be the right decision. Smyrna, Tennessee. A man's car is stalled on the railroad tracks. Police arrive to assist him and suspect that he's drunk. How much have you been drinking tonight? But before they can even administer a roadside sobriety test, oh, man. the midnight special comes rolling toward the stalled car and the inebriated driver. Hey, come on, come here. But being killed by a speeding locomotive is not what concerns this guy. Oh, he wants his car and doesn't want to let some silly train get in his way. Once out of harm's way, he gets a lesson in why he shouldn't drink and drive. This suspected drunk driver sobered up in a hurry. Had these officers shown up a few minutes later, this man might have lost both his car and his caboose. A coordinated pursuit is like a well-oiled machine, from the cruisers on the road to the chopper in the air, even to the eyes and ears of the neighborhood where it's happening. Early morning in Phoenix, Arizona, this stolen Suburban was just involved in a hit and run. But when the suspect fled the scene, a witness with a cell phone tailed the suspect until police could take over. Uh, I followed him down Broadway and down 7th Avenue and and uh, just kept following him on my cell phone. As soon as I pulled off, cops got in behind him. He just started running. But even the officers were forced to back off when the SUV turned reckless, thundering past children on their way to school. Luckily, a local news chopper was there to pick up the chase. That's a stolen Suburban going very fast in a school zone, and now he's turning. Oh! The impact is so hard, he even blows a tire. Off the curb, looks like this guy's almost out of control. Here, now he's, oh, look at that. He's out of the truck, and it's still rolling. The suspect leaps out of the still moving vehicle and smacks the pavement. The two-ton SUV barrels over a fence and slams into a parked car. With no police behind him, the suspect runs down an alley, looking for the perfect place to hide. Looks pretty young, possibly a teenager. We don't know if he's armed. And surprisingly, he doesn't seem to be injured in any way. Okay, now he's in a backyard, he's slowing down a little. For now, it seems he's running free. Still no police ground units in sight. Phoenix PD's helicopter is still en route, and it looks like right now we're the only ones watching him. The suspect sees that he's alone, then makes a surprising turn. Just hopped another fence. I don't know what he's... Wait! Oh, no, he's just run into that house. Officers drive down the alley behind the house, unaware that the suspect is inside. There goes another patrol car right there. They are so close. Then, some people start walking out of the house. Uh, this is just unbelievable. They're nonchalantly walking outside. Looks like a mother, probably, and some small children. It's the suspect's family, and they have no idea yet that he's a wanted criminal. Meanwhile, half a block away, officers have found the wrecked Suburban. They don't know how close they are, and we can't get on the police frequency right now. We have no way of contacting them. The officers have no leads until suddenly back at headquarters, the 911 switchboard lights up. Hundreds of people watching the broadcast from all over central Arizona start to call in, and they lead the officers right to the suspect's hideout. Okay, th now this officer is approaching the man that we saw outside earlier. They're just talking very calmly. There doesn't seem to be any danger here. The officers are even escorted inside to make the arrest. And within moments, the suspect is in custody. There he is. Looks like they got him. It's all over. This teenage car thief thought he could ditch and run to the perfect safe house, a place where he could blend in until it all blew over. But with a neighborhood watch as big as the whole city of Phoenix, there was nowhere to hide. Still to come on police video. When the bad guys pull ahead and officers lose ground, 
It takes a little help from above. Hardcore pilots versus full throttle felons in races against disaster. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. A helicopter is primarily a reconnaissance tool, directing ground units in a coordinated effort. But every once in a while, a chopper can send a message in a way a cruiser never could. Laredo, Texas. Trooper Joe Ramirez of the Highway Patrol is pulling over this pickup for a simple seatbelt violation. Stand for a standby one. But as soon as the trooper opens his door, the suspect bolts, tearing down the interstate. The officer soon learns the awful truth behind the suspect's flight. The man murdered his own wife in Springfield, Illinois, and is on the run in this stolen truck. He's already gone 1,500 miles to evade justice. And he's not about to give up now. The suspect crashes through a set of detour cones and onto a stretch of unpaved highway behind a Border Patrol checkpoint. Kicking up gravel and dust, he disappears in the distance until the trail leads back to the open interstate. Trooper Ramirez tracks him down, but both powerful vehicles are almost evenly matched. Made an excess of 120. The madman sidewinds through slower traffic, and the trooper can do nothing to stop him. Uh, I want to get too close to the guy who's acting now. That's when the pursuit gets a little help from above. Looks like we have a helicopter. Evading a checkpoint is a federal offense. And the Border Patrol chopper wants to make that fact perfectly clear. But the killer is held bent on escaping. He doubles back across the median and heads toward the Mexican border. Southbound. Now, he's only minutes from getting away with murder. But he can't outrun a helicopter. Suddenly, a log jam ahead. The suspect is blocked in front by two semis. But this desperado is determined to make it to Mexico and freedom. The suspect dodges left, then right, barging through one rolling roadblock and careening past another. We're doing 105. He's driving really recklessly. But the officers stick with him. All the while, the suspect races closer to the border and toward more Border Patrol agents. The chopper pilot continues distracting the harried suspect, taunting him like an unshakable shadow. The plan works. The distracted suspect blazes past an ambush and never sees the spike strips. Within minutes, his shredded left front tire erupts with smoke. The frustrated fugitive lashes out. He even tries ramming semis off the road. If he can cause the drivers to panic, their big rigs could jackknife and block the road, stopping the whole line of troopers behind him. By now, Trooper Ramirez has assistance on the ground. An unmarked unit races forward to ram the suspect off the road. Seeing a potential hostage, the maniac veers after an innocent driver in the breakdown lane, threatening to take both vehicles over the embankment. As cops surround him, he throws his hands up. But it could be another trick. The troopers aren't taking any chances. The frightened civilian gets out of the way as the suspect's 1,500-mile run for the border is finally brought to an end. This man thought he could get away with murder as he desperately blazed a trail to Mexico. We're doing 105. He's driving really recklessly. But the faster he charged towards the border, the sooner he crossed the border patrol. With a little help from above, this murderer was taught a lesson that he won't forget. You can't outfly justice. <laughs>
Los Angeles, California. There's a high-speed chase in progress, but not a police car in sight. It looks like ground units have completely backed off. Racing over 100 miles an hour, these suspects are alone on the blacktop. Moments ago, officers tried to stop the men for speeding. Now, ground units can't even keep up. This is one of the fastest, most dangerous suspects I have ever seen. Police have few options. They position themselves around the city and wait. They try to catch the motorcycle as it passes. But with a suspect that goes from zero to suicidal and nothing flat, officers can only give chase for a few fleeting seconds. But police aren't exactly down and out. They have other means and they use them. LAPD air support takes over as the primary unit. Now the driver tries to outrun the helicopter, a nearly impossible task. Uh, believe it or not, I think this guy is speeding up. The chopper pilot coordinates the suspect's location with officers on the ground. The driver continues speeding, but the passenger has had enough. He knows the odds of being killed in a crash are greater than his chance of escape. He pleads with his partner to let him off. OK, it looks like the passenger is trying to bail. The driver is reluctant to stop, even for a second. But his accomplice wants out, so he pulls over. Foot bail. Passenger just took off into the tree. He dumps his passenger and heads for the one place he thinks he can get even more speed, the freeway. Without the extra weight of his friend, the driver rockets along faster than ever. He even gives helicopters a run for their money. We're going well over 100 miles an hour. We're having trouble keeping up. Police watch in disbelief as the suspect barely squeezes between motorists. Unbelievably, he tries the insane move again and again. Well, if he, if he crashes going this fast, it's all over. But when traffic grows too intense, he darts off the freeway as quickly as he got on. OK, he's getting off. I think it's Vineland. Yeah, northbound Vineland, northbound Vineland. Unable to shake helicopters, the suspect grows more desperate, dangerously cuts off three lanes of traffic. But no matter what he does, he can't dodge the helicopter's watchful eye. In fact, his chances are about to get much worse. The needle teeters on empty. OK, making a left turn. With his fuel depleting rapidly, it becomes a race against time. Suspect is stopping. The bike stalls, and the suspect's time is run out. He dumps the two-wheeler and runs on foot. For a few tense moments, the fugitive vanishes. OK, he just took off into that building. I think it's a hospital. Suddenly, he emerges on the sidewalk but he only gets a few steps further. Did he go inside? Even though cruisers weren't there when the chase began, with air support and police radios, they're on hand when it's over. OK, he's giving up. It's over. Code 4, it's all over. The suspect's passenger didn't get far either. Because of helpful witnesses, officers found him with ease. Foot fail. Passenger just took off into the trees. But police almost didn't catch either suspect. After all, at speeds of up to 130 miles per hour, it would have been hard for any driver to keep up. But in the end, the suspect ran out of options. Suspect is stopping. While police watched from above. Just ahead on police video, it's time to take back the streets. From fugitives screaming through the suburbs to anarchists tearing up the city. The battle begins next. When it comes to riots, the police try to prepare for the worst because anyone who's ever been anywhere near a riot knows it can be a terrifying experience for protesters, for the targets of their protest, for bystanders, and certainly for the police. It's May Day in the city of Leipzig, Germany, but today there are no celebrations, only violence. In what's become a yearly tradition, demonstrators rally through the streets. 
Soon their opposition storms in to shut them up. They pelt the protesters with whatever they can find. Before long, both groups turn their aggression towards the town itself. Rock meets glass. And looters have their way. Everywhere. Wild mobs set fire to the streets. But just when it looks like the town may become an all-out war zone, German riot police rush in. At first, officers are grossly outnumbered. Rock throwers attack, while police try to corral the rioters. Despite strong resistance, they are able to suppress the troublemakers. High-pressure water hoses are brought out to extinguish the flames. Police bulldozers clear the wreckage from the streets. And as mass reinforcements march in, rioters cower behind the very mess they created. When two extreme worlds collide, and neither is willing to back down, someone's bound to get hurt. Luckily in this case, someone was there to stop the violence. Little Rock, Arkansas. Officers had stopped this vehicle for illegally tented windows. Normally, it's a fix-it ticket. Roll the window down. But apparently, the driver has something to hide. Not in pursuit this time. Instead of quietly concealing himself behind darkened glass, he quickly draws more attention than he can handle. He even catches the eye of another police unit. Now, trying to shake two officers, he charges blindly toward a busy cross street. Innocent motorists have no idea he's coming until it's too late. suspect tears into a passing Alfa Romeo, spinning the sports car a full 360 degrees. The lead unit cuts him off as the backup unit blocks his retreat. The driver manages to bail out, only to realize it's all over. As it turns out, the driver was trying to hide this dime bag of marijuana. But that was nothing compared to the mayhem he really caused. Luckily, the driver of the sports car suffered only minor injuries. Not in pursuit at this time. In his effort to remain in obscurity, this reckless recluse turned what could have been a simple fix-it ticket into a total wreck. Coming up on Police Videos, when lives are on the line... But he's running up towards the school. One officer's decision leaves no turning back. During a pursuit, police have to do two things at once. Catch the bad guys and keep innocent bystanders out of harm's way. Seminole County, Florida. This Ford Explorer has been evading officers across four counties with no end in sight. The driver has a history of drug abuse and mental illness. Schizophrenic and has uh, delusions, etc. Sheriff's deputy Rick Colentis races ahead to reason with the deluded man. But the suspect ignores him. He ain't gonna stop. Blazing into mid-afternoon traffic, he places a bus full of innocent lives between himself and the deputy. Deputy Kalintas tries again to pass the suspect and is forced back to avoid a head-on collision. By now, the officers know they have only one option left, ramming him. But the suspect eludes them, charging up oncoming lanes and storming headlong toward an elementary school. That's one, he's running up towards the school by zone three. The deputy has to stop the speeding explorer, fast. He barely misses, but Deputy Clintus knows that time is running out. There are other cars close on the road, 
but the SUV is hurtling toward crosswalks filled with young children. And this is the deputy's last chance to prevent a disaster. The patrol car punches the rear of the SUV, sending it into a fishtail spin. The top heavy vehicle flips right into another motorist. The deputy swerves to avoid the wreck, sliding into the grass and crashing into a tree. With that one decisive hit, the suspect is stopped cold. The SUV settles to a smoking wreck. Deputy Calentis, despite being stunned by his car's airbag, rushes to help the suspect. But the suspect still struggles, even after suffering serious injuries from the crash. It takes four officers to pull him from the wreckage and put him in handcuffs. No officer wants to be stuck with this choice. To either use aggressive maneuvers near innocent motorists, or let a reckless felon plow through a street full of pedestrians. He's running up towards the school by zone three. But hard choices and the need for quick decisions just come with the badge. Sir, we're cops. That is our job, and we're supposed to stop people like this. This is what we train for. He was not going to enter that school zone, sir. Thankfully, the driver of the white pickup was uninjured. I was very, very lucky. But as long as there are threats like this on the road, officers like Deputy Rick Calentis will do what it takes to run them in. One in custody. There's a reason why they call it a life of crime. It's a life where being wanted He's out of the truck. means being hunted. Where you trade a family of flesh and blood yeah, Mom, hug you. Goodbye. for the company of criminals. It's a life of war against the world. And the world will fight back.